I would like to welcome Dr. Christopher Sweeney, a medical oncologist at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Sweeney will be presenting LBA2, Overall Survival, Results of a Phase Three Randomized Trial of Standard of Care Therapy with or without enzalutamide for metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Enzimet, an ANZUP-led international cooperative group trial. Dr. Sweeney. Thank you, Drs. George and Bertinoli. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honour to present the overall survival results of the Enzimet trial on behalf of the study co-chair Ian Davis and the co-authors. This academic study was designed and led by ANZUP, Australian New Zealand Urogenital Prostate Cancer Trials Group, in collaboration with the Clinical Trials Centre, Canadian Cancer Trials Group, Cancer Trials Ireland and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. By way of background, until 2014, testosterone suppression with or without standard antiandrogens was the standard therapy for metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Since 2014, both docetaxel and abiraterone have both been shown to prolong the overall survival of men with metastatic prostate cancer when starting testosterone suppression. Docetaxel is a cytotoxic, whereas abiraterone is a hormonal therapy. Enzalutamide is a potent direct androgen receptor inhibitor, proven to also prolong the overall survival of men with castration-resistant prostate cancer. In the hormone-sensitive setting, enzalutamide has been shown to delay radiographic progression, and on Friday of this meeting, we learned that apalutamide also prolongs survival regardless of prior dose of taxol use. Enzimet is the first trial to report the impact of enzalutamide on the overall survival of men with metastatic prostate cancer starting testosterone suppression with a stratification by concurrent dose of taxol use. Put quite simply, the hypothesis underpinning the Enzimet trial is greater androgen receptor inhibition from adding enzalutamide to testosterone suppression will prolong the overall survival when used as first-line therapy for metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer with or without concurrent docetaxel, more than the addition of a standard antiandrogen. It is also of note this is the first study to include a standard antiandrogen as an active control. Enzimet addressed this hypothesis using the following study design. Patients were randomized to testosterone suppression with either a standard antiandrogen or enzalutamide. Patients were stratified by volume of metastases, age, planned early dose of taxol, ECOG performance status, use of agents approved for preventing skeletal related events for castration resistant disease, comorbidities, and study site. The primary endpoint is overall survival. Secondary endpoints to be presented are PSA progression-free survival using prostate cancer working group two criteria, which is a composite endpoint and includes clinical progression if it occurs first. Clinical progression-free survival as assessed by imaging, symptoms and physical examination was another endpoint, as was adverse events using common terminology criteria. Other planned future analyses include health-related quality of life, health outcome, outcomes related, relative to cost, and translational biological studies, which are ongoing analyses. The key eligibility criteria were metastatic prostate adenocarcinoma by either histology or clinical scenario, androgen deprivation up to 12 weeks prior to randomization as well as prior adjuvant hormonal therapy was allowed. Patients were required to have an ECOG performance status of zero, one, or two. Patients were also required to have adequate renal, liver, and cardiac function with no prior conditions predisposing to seizures. 
The study underwent two amendments to address new information that emerged during the study conduct. In all versions, a design with 1,100 patients used an intent to treat analysis plan with greater than 80% power to detect a 25% reduction in the rate of death was deployed. An amendment in November 2014 was made to allow concurrent docetaxel based on data presented at ASCO in 2014. The second amendment in March 2018 added, added interim analyses with 50% and 80% of the planned 470 events based on the efficacy observed in 2017 with abiraterone in metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. Ultimately, 1,125 men were, were accrued from March 2014 to March 2017. A planned interim analysis at 50% information with 235 deaths in February 2019 met the pre-specified criteria for significance and release of the data. The data today includes 245 deaths after a survival sweep with a median follow-up of 34 months. At this time, 143 deaths had occurred on the standard anti-androgen arm compared with 102 deaths on the enzalutamide arm. In essence, the patients accrued to the standard anti-androgen arm had the same characteristics as patients on the enzalutamide arm. The median ages were 69 years in both arms. There was an equal distribution of accrual by region with 57% accrued in Australia, approximately 20% in Canada, and 17% in the United Kingdom and Ireland. In both groups, approximately 72% of the patients had an ECOG performance status of zero and 27% with a performance status of one. The distribution of patients chosen for treatment with early docetaxel and high and low volumes was also well matched. Notably, 61% of the patients with high volume of metastases received early docetaxel. There was also an equal distribution of patients with comorbidity scores of two to three, use of anti-resorptive therapy, and patients who had a prior prostatectomy or prostate radiation and prior adjuvant hormonal therapy. The interim analysis revealed the death rate was reduced by 33% with enzalutamide with a hazard ratio of 0.67. The associated p-value was 0.002. In absolute terms, the associated three-year oval survival was 72% for the standard arm and 80% for the enzalutamide arm. Analyses of the secondary endpoints revealed enzalutamide prolonged cancer control as there was a 61% decreased risk of progression to castration-resistant prostate cancer as measured by rising PSA clinical progression or death, as well as a 60% decreased risk of clinical progression, namely symptomatic or radiographic progression. At three years, 63% of, of the patients in the standard anti-androgen arm had progressed compared with 33% of the patients on the enzalutamide arm. We pre-specified that use of concurrent docetaxel was of particular interest based on possible differences in biology and treatment implications. Notably, 70% of the 503 patients chosen for early docetaxel had a high volume of metastases and enzalutamide decreased the rate of progression by 52%. However, at the first interim analysis, there was no discernible clinically meaningful impact on overall survival. Of the 622 patients who did not receive early docetaxel, 37% had high volume disease and enzalutamide resulted in a 66% decreased rate of progression and this was associated with a 47% decreased rate of death. To present the data in absolute terms by the predefined subgroups, the three-year oral survival rates are provided. First, patients chosen to receive early docetaxel had a three-year oval survival of 75 and 74 percent 
without and with early enzalutamide, respectively. In contrast, for patients who did not receive early docetaxel, there was an absolute 13 per cent improvement from 70 per cent to 83 per cent with the addition of early enzalutamide. When the data is presented by volume of disease, it can be seen that the high volume patients on the standard arm had a 64 per cent three-year oval survival, which is better than data seen in recent studies and probably reflects the fact that 61 per cent of the high volume patients received early docetaxel. In this group, there was a 7 per cent absolute improvement in oval survival. For those with low volume disease, where 37 per cent received early docetaxel, patients on the enzalutamide arm had an 8 per cent improvement in oval survival from 82 per cent to 90 per cent. An analysis of the duration of study therapy and reasons for dis di discontinuing therapy reveal more patients on the standard arm received all six doses of docetaxel than patients on the enzalutamide arm. It was also revealed that patients on the standard arm had a greater number of patients discontinue therapy, 356, versus 201 patients on the enzalutamide arm. The key item to note is that less patients discontinued protocol therapy due to adverse events on the standard arm, 14 patients, compared with 33 patients on the enzalutamide arm. The toxicity profile was consistent with what has been described with enzalutamide. More serious adverse events were seen with enzalutamide, proportional to the longer time on study, and the serious adverse event rate was similar between arms. As expected, patients on the enzalutamide arm had more grade 2 and 3 hypertension and fatigue. In addition, although in the 5% range, there was still an increase in falls, syncope, syncope and concentration impairment. And despite excluding patients with conditions predisposing to seizures, there was still a 1% incidence of seizures. When the adverse event analysis was restricted to the first six months and focused on docetaxel related events, we observed the findings highlighted in yellow. There was a 13 and 14 per cent incidence of neutropenic fever. There was a 9 per cent incidence of grade 2 sensory neuropathy when enzalutamide was added to docetaxel versus 3 per cent with the standard antiandrogen. When enzalutamide was added to docetaxel, there was also an increase in nail discoloration, watery eyes and fatigue compared to patients who had a standard antiandrogen added to docetaxel. For perspective, of these adverse events, only fatigue was also reported with enzalutamide without docetaxel. Therapy beyond progression was captured. The high level summary is that patients on the standard arm had more patients who had progressed and had more life prolonging therapies. When the overall data was analysed, 4% of the 320 patients assigned to the standard arm who had progressed and also died of prostate cancer died without receiving docetaxel in the metastatic hormone sensitive or castration resistant setting, nor received other CRPC life prolonging therapies. As can be seen in this table, 85% of those who had progressed on the standard antiandrogen arm had received one or more life prolonging CRPC therapies versus 67% of patients who had progressed on enzalutamide. Specifically, there was more use of abiraterone or enzalutamide in the standard arm, 77%, versus 27% use of abiraterone in the enzalutamide arm. In essence, the observed overall survival benefit does not appear to be due to lack of access to life-prolonging therapy in the standard arm. The high-level conclusion is early enzalutamide improved time to progression and overall survival when added to standard metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer therapy. The clinical interpretation of this data is enzalutamide added to testosterone suppression represents an appropriate option for men with metastatic prostate cancer commencing testosterone suppression. The benefits are clear in patients with both a low and high volume of metastases. 
It is of note there was more expected toxicity seen with enzalutamide alone and more dose attacks of related toxicity with the addition of enzalutamide. For patients who are candidates for dose ataxel when starting testosterone suppression, quality of life analyses and longer follow-up are needed to determine whether the delay in progression with concurrent enzalutamide results in a meaningful clinical benefit and or is compounded by subsequent castration-resistant prostate cancer therapy and prolongs survival beyond three years. The Enzimet team would like to express our deepest gratitude to all the patients and their network of support, as well as to the research teams at the 83 centres for their dedication and enthusiasm for this study. We would also like to thank Estellas for their financial support, supply of enzalutamide and the advocacy for Enzimet to be run as an academic study. And the ANZUP team would also like to express our appreciation for the support of this new global collaboration with Cancer Trials Ireland, Canadian Cancer Trials Group, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and NHMRC Clinical Trials Centre. And we'd also like to draw your attention to the concurrent online publication and it is imperative to acknowledge Ian Davis, study co-chair, Andrew Martin, study statistician, and Martin Stockler for their incredible work to get this published within three months of the interim analysis. Thank you.